all set up. We got, we got, um, we got us going on live on Facebook now, and we got everybody at home. We've got. Oh, interesting. We don't have a scuba diver. We we have a scuba diver, and yeah. we don't have. We don't have my computer on, so Cindy can see all of you guys. They can see you, Cindy, but oh, hi, they, and everyone. they can hear you. Morning, Cindy. <laughs> Good morning, June. That's weird. Let's just try. Pastor Bill, how is Kim? She wasn't feeling very well. Is she better now? Kim is is better. She's doing sure. good. She's doing good. Um, so, yeah, she's she. They're doing much better, and she is doing good. Let me just try and share my screen here. Welcome, Facebook Live folks. Huh, that's so weird. The in-house one isn't working, but. I guess we don't have to kill ourselves about that, huh, Cindy? You can deal with just hearing people. Oh, yes, I'm fine them. with and that. And you don't have to see the, I mean, my screen here. I don't, it's, boy, every week it's something else. It's, <laughs> call <laughs> Amazon, they'll fix it. <laughs> hi, Ace. Is that Ace? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, okay. hi. Ace. Hello. Ethel May and now Kim is joining in. Yes, Kim. Hello. Hi, Good Kim. morning, Kim. Morning. So um, I am going to just try one thing. So um, just hang in there for a minute. Let's see. I think what I'll do is I'll press. Minutes up. And then press on. Perfect. And we want microphone. Oh. Hey everybody. So my computer just shut down because I thought I had the power plugged in, but I didn't. So just hang in. Everybody chill. It's all it's all good. We're gonna be up and running here in just a second. Facebook people, hold on, hang in there. Oh Justin. Yeah. No, that's okay. We uh I know how to fix this problem. So, so yeah, so let me just uh, get us started though while my other computer's powering up and I get on, get together. Let's see, let me put, put us over so I can see everybody. And I think we've got Kim there. Yeah, great. So um, we are gonna do something interesting here um, in August. We're going to leave the Revised Common Lectionary and we're going to be doing a special series called uh, Coming Out of Exile. And uh, in the book of Isaiah in the Old Testament, that major prophet, uh, part of that book in the middle section was spoken to the people when they had got news they were going to get to go home out of exile. Um, and uh, so as I was talking with Jonathan and I thought sometimes it's fun to do a little series in the summer. And so, uh, we decided in August, we'll preach from the middle part of Isaiah and that's going to be fun. And we've picked out some texts that we think will coincide because, you know, it's very similar. I mean, even though we're certainly not done with this pandemic, 
I just talked to somebody recently that said, you know, I just, even though I'm vaccinated, if people aren't wearing masks, I don't feel comfortable being back with other people. I mean, and all of this and, and, and I'm, I, I have no judgments on, on any of this really. Um, I guess I have my own personal opinions, but, but anyway, so we're still, people are uncertain what's going to be the future, but we can come back. We can worship. We are going home. We are going to be able to, but yet not yet. And, you know, so there's a lot of parallels to the situation Israel was in, in exile and us um, coming out of this pandemic. So, so that's the uh, philosophy and theory of why, um, you know, we, uh, um, we're going to do it in this way, uh, do, to do this little series. I'm now going to get on Zoom. Let's see here. Okay, let's go here and go here. <laughs> okay, let's do that do it differently. So that's what's going to happen in August. So the reason I tell you that at this study, where we're still in the revised common lectionary, is it, in year B, uh, and actually in the revised common lecture, I think it's every summer, uh, they, about this time in the summer, we focus in on um, the sixth chapter of John, uh, the bread of light. Jesus is the bread of light. And uh, so uh, we're, you know, what we're going to miss is like three more weeks on John 6, but we're going to do it one week. <laughs> so we're going to get it all in one week. So I'm expanding a little bit. Here we go. Join with computer audio. All right. So I'm going to delete that. I'm going to go to over here. So you see Cindy on that one. And now I will go over here. We are live, but we still cannot see. Isn't that crazy? We still can't see them inside. Okay, we'll figure that out later. It's okay. Uh, start video. And can you guys hear us? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And we can hear you. All right. And you'll be able to hear Cindy as well. So, okay. You're kind of in the background on your uh, voice. Okay, let's see. Mm -hmm. Ah, see why. Okay, that should be better. Yes. Yeah. Yes. All right, thank you. Okay, all right, Facebook people, thank you. I'm going to press record so we can upload this um, to. Thank you. All right. Well, let's. So with that, we're going to do John six. We add a little bit, um, subtract a little bit, so we can get more of this in there. But so we're going to try and get all of what we can from John six in one week versus multiple weeks because we're going to do that sermon series. So there you go. That's that's what's coming. And so whether you're tuning in uh, in person or on Facebook or here or whatever or at home, um, you now have the four one one on what's going to happen in. Scripture readings coming up at SLC in the next uh, month or so. So with that, let me open us in a prayer and we'll rock and roll. Gracious and loving God, thank you for this time together. Let this time be fruitful and helpful. Let it be a blessing to us in our walk and, and indeed give us bread to eat. Bread that lasts for eternity. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. So... I'll get this little screen shared here. So um, I'm going to move this over. John study. Get over here. Get rid of that. All right. So John 6. And we'll start with uh, verse 1. And we'll go to verse 15. And then we're going to pick up again and go... Um, to 22 through like, I don't know, 27, 22 through 27. So with that, anybody want to read 1 through 15, John 6? I'll read. Thank you, June. 
After Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias, a large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, where are, where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew that he was what he was going to do. Philip answered him, six months wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother said to him, there is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they among so many people? Jesus said, make the people sit down. Okay, now there was... There you go. Thank you. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. So also the fish, as many as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told the disciples, gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled 12 baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, this is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force and make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. All right, so we're going to skip the walking on the water and we're going to go to 22 and can you go to 27, Jean? I mean, June? <laughs> sure, let's try it. The next day, the crowd that had stayed on the other side of the sea saw that there had been only one boat there. They also saw that Jesus had not got into the boat with his disciples, but that his disciples had gone away alone. Then some boats from Tiberias came near the place where they had eaten bread after the Lord had given thanks. So then the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there. They themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him, <clears throat> excuse me, when they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, very truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. <coughs> Excuse me. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, what must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, this is the work of God, that you believe in him who has sent. So they said to him, what sign are you going to give us then so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? That's, yeah, that's probably good. Yep, yep. So okay. we'll, I, think, I think I cut it off in the, for Sunday in, at 29. Okay. But you know what? But you know what, June? Let's just keep going. Let's, let's go ahead and do 30 through 35. Through okay. 35. 35 or so. said to yeah. him. Sorry. That's there okay. you go. Uh, okay. Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. And they said to him, sir, 
Give us this bread always. Do just 35 now. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. All right, perfect. So it obviously keeps going, um, but we'll, we got to stop somewhere. <laughs> um, so, so there you go. There, yeah, thanks, June. Good job. Good job. So, and yeah, I got it finally up there figured out. Yeah, so, yeah, so now Cindy can see you guys. Um, so, yeah, um, as we often do, I like to just start off with what jumps out at you here as you re read this. Um, what, uh, what, what strikes you as you, you know, get into working with this? There are two things that jump out to me always, and that is how important bread and water were to the people in the first century. That was that was life, wasn't it? Yep. Yes. Absolutely. That um, that was the the focus. That was everything to them. So, yep. I'm gonna write write some notes. Thanks, June. Um, so this is a symbol that Jesus talks about that people are going to really be tuned into. Water is life. Bread is life. Absolutely. Why else do you think Jesus chose this? What else could be a part of this bread and water thing? That's what you make me think about when you say that. Well, the provision in the desert. Yeah, so... Um, Kim's referring to the manna, how God took care of the people. And, and in fact, it's referenced here, you know, Moses gave us manna, you know, this type of thing. So, yeah. So it connects what Jesus is talking about to that story for sure. Right. Yeah. What else jumps out at you? a lot of questions yeah and i i i have a inkling that they were confused mm. yeah um, they're asked I, and and i you know when they say and then jesus answers them but they still kind of seem confused um mm. not that i'm not confused <laughs> <laughs> You, you know all things. You are complete, complete. No, yeah. No, it's just, you know, it's, you know, why did you go away? Where did you go? Um, uh, you know, these questions about it. Uh, what, must, what must we do to perform the works of When did you come here? What must we do to the perform the works of God and what sign? So these, this is great. So there, they have lots of questions. So maybe, boy, that could be the structure of the sermon in and of itself right there. Okay. Um, let's see. Wait, I went too far. Um, when did you come here? <laughs> what must we do, must we do to perform the works of God and what sign interesting it also means that they're interested mm -hmm. they're uh, they don't want to just let go they they keep on you know um yeah it's, it's like they really want to find out something yeah they seem to be engaged don't they yeah. interested engaged yeah yeah, that's good. That's good. And then, and then he, Jesus seems to hook him, hook them. This my father gives you the true bread from heaven, the bread of God, that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So, so they're like, yes, give us that bread always. You know, okay, we got it. And what does he say? I am. 
the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. It's kind of like a little bit like the the dialogue with the woman on the well, at the well, you know. Right. You know, I'll give you water that you'll never thirst again. She says, "Give me this water." And right. And you know, so so yeah, if we dig down, how do they respond to that? Let's see. Pastor Bill, I yeah. was uh, thinking about as, as she's reading this and we're talking, it sort of reminds me of uh, people who go on a trip together. And uh, there are always some people that are just at the head of the line and ready to get everything without waiting for the guide's instructions. And then there are some people at the end of the line who want to know more information. Now, mm. is this whole wheat? And was it uh, raised... Uh, you know, without fertilizer, and is it good? And and will I have any after effects of it? And you know, they're afraid to take part of what's available because of their anxiety. And others move ahead so fast that they don't listen to the actual reason for the thing. So he had a whole group of variety of people there. Yeah, what is that? Uh, there's the social uh, or group theory that. You have your, your, you have your people who typically jump in, who you know, and then people who don't jump in, who are like major questioning, and then you got the people in the middle that are, you know, um, oh, what? How do they? There's a different language they use to talk about that dynamic. That, you know, um, so yeah, you've got the whole assortment here, don't you, Ethel May? Yeah, that's, that's good. Yeah, I was just thinking about how do they respond after Jesus says, I am the bread of life. I've come down for everything the Father gives me will come to me. And everyone who comes to me, I will never drive away. And I have come down from heaven, not to do my will, own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. This is indeed the will of the Father, that all who see the Son and believe in him may have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. Okay, so here we go. This is the bread of life, why the bread of life has come. Um, they said, you'll give us this bread always. But now the response to that from the Jews, they begin to complain about him because said, I am the bread that's come down from heaven. Why are they complaining? Because um, uh, isn't this Joseph, Jesus, son of Joseph? We know this guy, you know, I mean, he, he's full of himself. How can he now say, I've come down from heaven? Jesus says, do not complain among yourselves. No one can come down unless drawn by, come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me. Um, this is a big text, by the way, for our Calvinist predestination folks that an irresistible grace. No one can come to me unless drawn, or this Greek word here is to drag, actually. <laughs> you know, you're you you're driven in you know we and and we're half predestinate we believe in predestination but not pre damnate you know we don't believe god destines anybody for not believing but we believe that our coming to god is really being drawn by you know we we really don't you know jesus will say in another spot uh, you know i chose you you didn't choose me so anyway but anyway that's just a side note that that's a really big important text. Um, uh, so uh, very true life, you are believes in me has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate man in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven that one may eat of it and not die. I'm the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give you, give for the life of the world is my what? Flesh. Okay, so now big trouble there. Yes. Um, and again, we're not going to go into all this on Sunday, but it's hard to stop halfway through. Um, <laughs> then the Jews are all in an uproar. How can this man say he gives us flesh to eat? And then he has this very difficult saying about people, you know, um, you know, unless you eat of my flesh, the son, flesh of the Son of Man, drink his blood, you have no life in you. Um, and, you know, this is a big stumbling block. Uh, um, this... Well, and you'll live forever. And these things while he was teaching at the synagogue in Capernaum. So he says this. And at this point, then after that, a lot of people say, we're out of here. This guy's crazy. Yeah. The teacher 
difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, aware that his disciples were complaining, had said to them, does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? That's that Jacob's Ladder reference where, you know, it's a theophany. Um, it is the spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you, there are some who do not believe. And this is a reference to Judas. Um, and then this is the catchphrase right here. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So at this point is a jump off. You know, this bread of life stuff is, is you know, parting words. This is offensive, uh, you know, people can't handle it, and they leave him. And so then Jesus says, do you wish to go too? And Simon Peter says, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the eternal words of eternal life. Um, we have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. So I did not choose you, did not, anyway, then he goes back to, this is what we sing on Sunday mornings, isn't mm -hmm. it? Most people don't know where that comes from. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. So let it be, you know, truly, truly is alleluia. It's, you know, so um, we sing that, which is Peter's word to Jesus when Jesus said, are you going to go away? And so by us singing that, we're really saying, Lord, we're not going away. We are going to listen. And again, so many times where we quote scripture in our liturgy, we don't always know where it is, and we kind of lose some of the power of it. Um, that's why we sing that at that point is, no, Lord, we're not leaving. We're sticking with you, and we're going to listen. We're going to let you work on us. And so there you go. So that, that puts the whole thing in context of where this goes. So it's interesting. And I went there because, Cindy, you mentioned, you know, the they're inquisitive, they have lots of questions, and June drew our attention to one question in particular, but we got three questions, and then the, re the response, it seems like, isn't very good. They're not like, well, at first they were like, yes, give us the spread always, and then they go, oh, wait a minute, I don't know about this. You're the bread? <laughs> You're the bread? You're the manna? How can this be? And then they have a they have a stumbling block there. So anyway, interesting. I went on a little long <clears throat> there. So where, where, what, what, what keeps surfacing now for you? I think they were frightened when they heard, "Eat my flesh, drink my blood." I think they're thinking cannibalism. My goodness, what's going on with this guy? And I right. think it scared them. He yep. was talking to them in mysticism, and they were talking to, they were listening with rational ears, with yep. ears rather than ears of faith. Yeah, yeah. So um, your comment makes me think about some more history with this chapter. And so uh, Lutherans, and uh, the other reformed group was championed by Zwingli, and, and then Calvin kind of comes after that. They looked at this, and they said, yes, the last part is about the Lord's Supper, and obviously Jesus is talking purely symbolically. And right. so they, they went to this chapter to say, Lutherans, you're wrong about the Lord's Supper. It's not really Christ's body and blood. Um, this is just a symbol. Obviously, he says, I am the bread of life. He says, I'm the light of the world. He says, I'm the water of life. Jesus talks symbolically. That's what the Lord's Supper is. It's not really the body and blood of Christ. And so Luther pushed back. And he's not talking about actual bread. <laughs> He's not talking about actual water. <laughs> He's talking about something more, but it's a, it's a wonderful literary device that's used in the Gospel of John. These, uh, the crowd or the disciples or the woman at the well, they're kind of the foil. They're, they like get us like, a, come on, it's not that. And then yeah. we go, oh, so we get it, you know, kind of thing. So, yeah, so they're, they're, they're missing it, aren't they, June? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, 
we when we come when we go to the end of the chapter we talks about my flesh is true you know i i don't know that this isn't a reference church fathers have wrestled with this is this a reference to the lord's supper um because he does say this is my you know takes the bread and he says this is my body given for you in the synoptic gospels in the last supper this is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people so you know this is uh yeah, it, maybe he is talking about the Lord's Supper here um, and actually affirming the real presence uh, that, that Christ is in with and under the bread and wine, as we like to say. So anyway, but just it's it's been a this is this chapter has really been hashed over and worked over on some of those questions for sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so how does this preach good news? How does this help us? This all this talk about Jesus being the bread. The very sentence. Anybody who believes in me will have eternal life. It, it's again talking about faith. Can you believe in me without signs? Can you believe in what I'm telling you without signs? Or do you constantly have to see? And that's the difference between faith and not faith. The fact mm -hmm. that I can believe without seeing. Mm. Yeah, that fits that fits June with that Thomas dialogue at the end after he's raised from the dead. More blessed are those who believe and do not see, like Thomas got to see. Yeah. Yeah. And he still gives those as a gift. I think those signs that, um, you know, <clears throat> I think it would be hard to believe someone who comes in and says all these things that are so uh, contrary to what they've been taught and taught and taught and taught. And, <clears throat> you know, uh, faithful Hebrew people that have been, you know, living living a life in their God all these years and then now this guy comes and turns it all on their head I think it would be hard to do these without sight you know it would have been hard for him just to come in and saying these things and have people draw the conclusion that you know he is who he says he is without there being some sort of sign yeah excellent excellent Kim yeah um, and what is the ultimate sign he gives, you think? Well, ultimately, it's his death and resurrection. Right. Yep. That's the ultimate sign. And maybe also even go back further, his incarnation. Um, because, you know, what sign are you going to give us? And he says, they gave us, God gave us manna or Moses gave us manna. And Jesus reminds them, it wasn't Moses, it was God. And so God too is giving you a sign and he says, hello, look at me. <laughs> um, he says, I'm the one, I'm the one that, uh, you know, um, I'm the one you should be looking at. I am the sign. He's standing in front of you. <laughs> you know, you're missing it. You're looking for me to do something. I'm it. Um, and then he just starts talking about himself, which that then freaks freaks them out. But so so absolutely, Kim, the death and resurrection of Jesus is the ultimate sign, the ultimate, uh, you know, the death. They, you know, Jesus being put to death silences everything he said about himself and about God. And the resurrection said, uh-uh, not so fast. It's all true. What Jesus said is true. So the resurrection confirms, you know, everything that Jesus is saying here. And so that is the ultimate sign. But maybe we could also just say Jesus himself, the whole event, his incarnation and, you know, his birth, life, death, resurrection, it all is that is that sign perhaps yeah yeah excellent one of the things that I, that i was thinking about is jesus do you Whoop. also wish to go away in uh, verse 67 
I just really that I mean that's kind of a for some reason an emotional question. Yeah. Um, he, I mean, I can just see him seeing some of his disciples turning back and and going away, and you know, I know Jesus knows everything, God knows everything, but still, that question uh, just kind of it shows it shows the humanity of of, of God and in Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know. Yes. And then this this part that it's um then Simon Peter uh, sorry Simon Simon Peter says Lord to whom shall we go that's like like you can just see Peter say you know I mean who do you think we're gonna go to mm -hmm. you know I mean we've been hanging around with you a long time yeah and we've seen uh, signs and we've seen this and we've seen that yeah. We you have the words, you know. And mm -hmm. to me, I I just embrace that because it's kind of like that's what I say to myself. Oh Lord, who else would we go to? It's yeah. it's right here. <laughs> yeah. I and I don't know, it's just that I still get wrapped into that, you know, you're the one. And so being the one, uh, and Peter's saying that, it's like he's saying, okay, maybe I don't understand all this right now, mm -hmm. but I trust you. Mm. I don't want to go to somebody else. Mm -hmm. I mean, he could have said, well, wait a minute, let, let, let's talk to the, um, the elders, and let's talk to this, and let's talk to that, and see if this right. is, you know, squares away with you know, Jewish, Jewish custom. Mm -hmm. No, he didn't do that. Mm. Right. Yeah. He says he says you have the words of eternal life. Yeah. Oh. And it's that's his his trust. That's what we sing every time. You have the words. We trust you. We're not going to go anywhere else. I know there are some people that are not going to follow you, but I'm here. That's you know maybe that's why Jesus said I'm going to build my church on on you, Peter. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. On his uh his his saying, You are you are the one that yeah. has the words of eternal life. Yeah. 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 That's that is actually what what the Protestant Lutheran take on that, uh Jesus saying, On you I will build my church. Yeah. You know, that it's on Peter's confession and not necessarily on his person, you know. Yeah. I mean, after all, you remember who Peter is. Come yeah. on. So, but you just said something that really, that well, a lot of what you said resonated with me, but um, so Peter says, you have the words of eternal life. And Jesus has said that the bread, the one who eats of this bread will have eternal life. So if words of eternal life and bread and eternal life, so really, what is the bread Jesus is talking about? Is the word. Is words. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's his preaching. Mm -hmm. It's his teaching. It's his proclamation. Um, so yeah, that's that's really cool. I hadn't made that connection. So yeah, really helpful. Really good. What else? Let's see. Um, oh, some, another thing you said, or I think maybe this was off of what June. I, I this is the work of God that you believe in, whom He has sent. So. You know, we as human beings, when we encounter, look at the transition. Okay, so we want to know when when did you come here? How did you get here? Um, and so they're like, you know, that gives Jesus an opportunity to say, I know what you're after. <laughs> you ate your fill of the loaves, so you're you're hungry, and that's all fine. But you know, um, don't work, don't don't be about that. So, so their first question Jesus takes as they're just hungry and they're like, hey, and, and you know, I bet you the bread that Jesus multiplied is pretty good. I mean, I'm sure it was warm and, you know, <laughs> chewy and just, mm, you know, so they want some more. But so that's their first question, you know, like we want that it really. And that's the way Jesus takes that. When did you come here? In other words, hey, we're, we're looking for some bread. Jesus says, uh-uh, 
you know, work for the food that, you know, do not work for the food that perishes, but the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you, for it's on him that God has set his seal. That's an important thing. We need to come back to that setting of the seal thing. Um, so, so Jesus points him and then say, well, what must we do to perform the works of God? And it's interesting. Do you get the juxtaposition here? You know, Jesus doesn't say, well, to keep the Ten Commandments, uh, you know, love God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and your neighbor as yourself. He doesn't say, let justice roll down like waters and walk humbly with your God. He, does, he doesn't say that. He says, believe in him whom the Father has sent. So what is it that we do? If there's anything that we do, it's clinging, believing, trusting in Christ, not in us. So I think that's powerful. So, and then, you know, they get this word, which they're like scratching their heads about. Well, what are you got? You're going to then give us a sign, right? To, you know, you know, prove that you can say such a thing. So anyway, I think that's that's a part that, as we've been hearing this text uh, in lots of contexts this week, has really struck me. Um, yeah. I find it very interesting that Jesus understands the people, the common people of the day, and therefore uses not uh, words that they would understand so readily, bread. Bread is yep. very important to these people. Food is very important to these people because of the harshness of the conditions of the day. Sure. He uses that in order to be able to preach the word. He uses a simple thing that they will all understand, bread. Absolutely. And then, you know, not only will they understand it, it's ordinary stuff. Right. I mean, it's the stuff of life, but right. it's also, it's everyday, ordinary exactly. stuff, you know. But um, they understand. Yeah, yeah. And the other op the other side of it, and this moves us maybe a little bit to the synoptics, but or or maybe we could look at the last part of chapter six here this way. But it's interesting that when Jesus institutes the, the Lord's Supper, June, that he takes ordinary bread. Right. Right. You know, it yeah, it was probably the Passover bread. All those depend. You know, scholars can talk about you know wrestle with that. Um, the Apostle Paul, when he talks about us communing with each other, he takes we commune from one loaf. Um, it's not he doesn't you know it doesn't say you know a loaf is not unleavened. So um, you know so when sometimes people get on me and say how can we use Hawaiian bread for communion? That's that's not unleavened. And I say well that that was the Passover. We're not doing the Passover. Jesus took care of that. So, um, but nonetheless, uh, it's ordinary stuff. It's ordinary bread, June. And just like, the, what are, what's the objection to the people? Jesus saying, I'm, God has set his seal on me. They say, you're just Joseph and Mary's son. Right. You're an ordinary guy. We know you. There's no way you can actually be this, you know, Messiah. You know, they, you know, so... So kind of, it's interesting, the bread being ordinary, Jesus being ordinary is what we as human beings take offense to. So, so but yes, they can understand that image as well, for sure, yeah. Um, the other thing you get me thinking about on that comment um, is the manna. So um, we can see from Jewish expectations, messianic expectations, and I've been harping a lot on this the last couple of years, so I'll reiterate it again. We've often talked about that the Jewish people were hoping for a physical king messiah. It's right here. They want to take him and make him king. And right. Jesus, says, eh, you know, so I don't deny 
that that they were hoping that the Messiah would be a kind of warrior king that would get rid of the Romans. But we've gotten way too myopic on that. The messianic expectations of the Old Testament and the Jewish rabbis of Jesus' day, and certainly the ones even after Jesus' day, the, the rabbis that didn't see Jesus as the Messiah, they, they expected that when the day of the Lord would come and the Messiah would come is that there would be a new kind of Moses, um, a prophet like Moses. And what did Moses do? Well, he led them out of slavery and then he gave them manna in the wilderness. He gave them the supernatural special bread in the wilderness. And so when they talked about when the Messiah comes, one of the things the Messiah would do is give them new manna. And so here, look what Jesus is doing. He feeds 5,000 people, you know. So, you know, what a lot of the Jewish leaders should have been going, wait a minute. Is there's a connection here? And, and when is it happening? When does the story happen? Just so happens John tells us. Now the Passover was going, which the Passover is the celebration of God taking the people out of Egypt, the new Exodus, and then the manna. The Passover was really a celebration of the whole event, you know. So, so it's interesting that that's the context here. Um, so, yeah. Really cool. I have a little tangent that I was thinking about going on, but let me pause and see what other comments you've got here with this. Where do we get this bread today? Maybe a simple answer, but where do we get it? Where, I mean, you know. Well, after we sing hallelujah, Lord, to whom shall we go? Yeah, the words of eternal life. Yeah, that's where we get it, isn't it? Yeah. Right after that. <laughs> then you give it to us. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I give you the food. We Jonathan gives you the food. Your pastor gives you the food. You give, maybe you give the food when somebody you see is hungry for something more than just actual bread that they're searching. And you can tell them Jesus loves you and forgives you all your sins. Jesus is with you. Um, you know, yeah, Jesus oh. is, yeah. You know, we were talking about how his miracles went along with his word. And mm -hmm. maybe that's kind of the same for us, that our, our works of the spirit go along with the word. You know, they're the, they get people's attention and uh, get them in a place where they can hear the word. You know, like I was thinking about... Um, um, you know, the, supporting food pantries and supporting backpacks and stuff like that. You know, we we do those things, but there's a message in there too, you know? And I, I don't know that people would be as open to hear the message without having that practical gift too. Mm. Mm. Interesting. So, so a corrective Kim might be offering to looking at this in a purely spiritual manner. Jesus did, after all, give them actual bread. <laughs> so, and if we just want to talk about Jesus's word as the bread from heaven, then we maybe also better be helping them with the actual bread they need to keep them going. Is that kind of the point? Yeah, or just that... Um... This is hard stuff to understand and but it but filling your belly is easy to understand and yeah. a church that will you know a group that will do that for you is going to get my attention um i guess that's kind of where i was going and so it's kind of like with the miracles too that he didn't have to do those but they got people's attention and they came looking you know i think it says that in the first part of of the chapter that they were following him because he was healing people and so that's what hooked them and then the word is what you know cleaned him and fried him kind of, you know? 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, that's intriguing to me because, um, I think the church has lived with that in that tension, it's you know, a tension, right? Yeah. It is a tension. And sometimes we, we, um, we err on the side of trying to correct it. In the seventies, there was quite a movement about, you know, it's, it's symbolic and this is what it is. And so we can use graham crackers and soda pop for the elements in the communion. It's his word that does it. Well, that, you know, it's an emphasis on the word, but let's be a little bit reverent about the situation too. That doesn't didn't quite yeah. go with my understanding. No. Um, he didn't take grain crackers. He took bread. <laughs> well, yeah. that's just bread to some people. So. Yeah, I guess yeah. so. But yeah, so but you start getting away from his yeah. word and the, what yeah. he what he did. Then where do you stop? Like you know, yeah. and I you you get me thinking Ethel May of my biggest struggle with uh, you know virtual home communion. Because yeah. I can't tell you how many people have told me, oh, I didn't have any bread, so I just got some chocolate chip cookies. And, and like, are you really believing this is the real body and blood of Christ? Yeah. Well, I think some are, but it it it, it yeah. it's, makes it's it hard to hard to keep keep that right observance going when when yeah. we did that. Now we did it for a short time. We did it for a reason, but. It, there's going to be a time when we almost have to say, you know, now that you can come to church and people can come to you, that's what we need to be doing. <laughs> but anyway, that's a side issue, but you got me thinking about that. Yeah. yeah. One, of the, one yeah. of the things I think about, too, about that is where are our roots in the Jewish, you know, in, in that type of thing? And there were routines and there were practices in that religion yeah, at the religion at that time that were sacred and to throw that out and say oh well we'll just do our own thing yeah it's kind of like denying our four month four you know the the four people of four runners, yeah. runners yeah. of yeah. The faith yeah and our and our being rooted in that tradition you know right. yeah and that's that's what makes it safe yeah in a lot of in a lot of ways the same we're just continuing yeah you know something that is not creative we're not trying to be creative here. Mm -hmm. we're trying to just practice these routines because we hold them sacred yeah 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 and and yeah absolutely and this is something you know the the lutheran confession about the real presence of christ in the supper is a delicate and hard little line to walk because I, I can't tell you how many people in Lutheran pews have said, well, we don't really believe it's the body in Christ. It's symbolic. You know, we're not Roman Catholics. And I go, well, we're a lot more Roman Catholic than, than the other. Because the Roman Catholics believe this is the body of Christ. This is the blood of Christ. Now, they, they want to say it changes. It's no longer actually bread and wine. It, this transubstantiation thing, even though it looks like bread and wine, it's not bread and wine, all this stuff. It's, they use a Aristotelian um, kind of philosophy um, language to describe this change. But we just say, the scriptures don't really go into that. We're just going to trust that Jesus said, this is my body. So if he took bread, then, you know, so to, to not do that, we lose touch with him, I think, in that a little bit. But anyway, yeah, so no, that's, that's, that's helpful. I'm I'm still wrestling a little bit with what Kim was sharing about, you know, that the church, you know, in Ethiopia, the one of the officials there said, we care for the whole person. That's the way they looked at it. And so, yeah, they were involved in pantry kitchens and, you know, helping people who were suffering and hurting and you know, being with widows and, you know, because there were a lot of those um, for lots of reasons. And even some, you know, challenging the government, you know, position, but the church was, um, you know, just like here, various church, various groups and churches were more or less involved. It's not as safe there to 
challenge the government as it is here um, or whatever authority. And we're seeing a lot of struggles in Ethiopia, but they cared for the whole person. That's the way they looked at it. And I guess that's the way to bring the, like the tension Kim, I think was referring to is like the church feeds, we're going to feed people at manna, manna <laughs> um, or at hearty meal today. Uh, and the church has been very good about doing social ministries like that advocacy, um, uh, you know, advocacy or soup kitchens. How many soup kitchens were not started by Christians? I don't know. Not very many. Not very many. You know, I mean, the church has been great at this. You know, the Jesus's words about it, when and you've done it to the least of these, and you've done it to me, have spurred us on as they rightly should. And we've we've done a lot of that, which we should do. <laughs> um, but we've also got another word to say to people like Kim, you said, that's not easy to understand sometimes, you know. Um, well, and <clears throat> feeding is easy to understand. And so um, I can see how it's easy to sort of stop there and say, well, this is the gospel. Um, <clears throat> yeah. You know, especially if you had to explain John chapter six to somebody coming in cold, you know, that's, that's yeah. hard. Yeah, this saying is too hard for us, Lord. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And okay. we don't necessarily, yeah, go ahead, June. There is an individual side of this that I see. If feeding the bread, if the bread is the word of Jesus, yeah. feed myself every time I read scripture. I feed myself every time I say prayers. So even though I'm not actually taking communion, I'm using Jesus' words to feed my own spirit. Mm -hmm. That's an individual thing I can do every day. Yep, yep. I think, and I think there's power to do it individually and there's power to do it together. Like Absolutely. we're doing like we're doing today or we do when we read scripture publicly in worship um i think all of that is 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 food for our faith and our soul nourishment <laughs> um whether it's for our faith or for a christian life, whatever but um it, it it definitely functions that way i mean there's just something that when you just are in, steeped in the word it, there's i don't know there's just something to that so yeah that's great that's and, great um to kind of piggyback on uh, kim's idea about the trinity i mean how many times have i you know kind of wondered about something or been thinking about something and it's like okay where are you going to go well that's the spirit working in my heart working in my mind to say where are you going to go you know and that pushes me right into the bible yep what is the, the verse i want to read what is the passage i want to read and i i do i really think the times that i've been like in the wilderness are times where i've kind of mentally blocked out the spirit yeah it's like you know or not recognized Mm. or not recognize the spirit trying to try to suggest that I might try to yep. you know yeah <laughs> try to stop trying to do it myself all the time yep. and let God talk to me mm. you know through his words mm -hmm. instead of me trying to wrestle with it I yeah. you know I'm human <laughs> yeah right I can relate Cindy yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah maybe a little bit of what you're saying is you know, like that little statement from Mark Allen Powell I've used, I've said so many times, uh, you know, make yourself as big a target for the Holy Spirit as possible. Yeah. So open up that Bible, you know, <laughs> you know, because, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, the other thing we don't want to do, though, Kim, going back again to your comment is do like the Salvation Army does. And, you know, now I think they still do this, but they used to like, and so I don't know, but, but, you know, you, you have to come to church first, mm -hmm. you go to the service and then they'll give you some food. Right. <laughs> and in one sense, you know, you really can't, 
it's hard to criticize the Salvation Army because if there's been a group that's been with the marginalized and the poor and the suffering, the Salvation Army has done that. And that's the way they were founded and reaching the people that didn't feel comfortable walking into a church and, you know, all of this. So so you have to give thanks for that. But they they have been a little bit legalistic in my view that, yeah, you, you got to do this first and then you can, then we'll give you a food. It's like, it seems to be, reversed you know give them food first and then take them to the the right. spiritual part. yeah so yeah 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 um yeah good other other thoughts what I about little... the seal? you were talking about the seal yes okay good thank you so um this is a really important um point uh about Jesus himself. If we were to go down, I think, let's see, if we keep going. Where did they, they start saying, um, yes. Uh, let's see, you know, I'm leaving. I think, don't they start accusing him of being from Beelzebul, from being from the devil? Um, you know, uh, let's see. Yeah, it, it's going to happen if it hasn't already happened where they're, you know, Jesus is accused of being from the devil. Um, and so the question is, where is Jesus from is really important. Is he sent from God or is he sent from uh, the opposite of God, <laughs> from the devil. So um, if we if we go over here and I do a quick little search in the let's let's do this, but I want to put the search over here so you guys can see it better. And we go, let's see, New Testament, and we'll just use the word sent. Do a quick one. So a lot of stuff about being sent, but look when we get to John, Lot and Luke. Um, I probably it'd be. Let's see. I actually could do it this way. Let's see. Um, this near that. So let's do that search. This sent near Father. See what that does for us. Yeah. Um, look at how many times. So the son does not honor the father who sent them. The father who sent him on behalf of the father has sent me. The father has sent me over and over. Now we get to six drawn by the father who sent me. So we get this constant phrase in John that Jesus that the father has sent Jesus. Um, because the Father, whoever, um, but I, um, the Father who sent me. You, so you, you get it? And I've just gone through a few of them. <laughs> um, um, and then in 1 John, we hear that the Father has sent his son, Jesus. So, so all of that to say that um, when it talks about setting his seal, um, a seal in that day was a guarantee that a letter was from someone. I mean, and that we that wasn't so long ago that that was still true. Um, in fact, what we find a lot of in archaeology when we you know look at things is um, we find the I guess they're called bulas. Um, it's the like the ring. It's the thing that made the mark in the wax. Uh, so like a king would have that. And that's what we find. Uh, the, those are left over. The seals usually are not, but we find the little deal that would make the, the seal. So so the, so the people understood that terminology. We are like seal, like said as seal. So this is the father saying, I've set my stamp of approval on this guy. This is the one. Listen to him. Like in the baptism of Jesus, the synoptics, where the voice comes from heaven. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. <laughs> um, you know, or transfiguration, you know. 
Um, so, so that's a powerful little phrase there um, that that God that Jesus God has put His seal upon the Son of Man upon Jesus. Um, and authorized. It's a, yeah, He's authorized, and it's a guarantee that this guy is from the Father. Yeah. Like Jesus is in essence a letter. We've been talking about words, right? Yeah. So Jesus says word. Well, he's like a he's the letter. He's the love letter from God. He's set the stamp on. Um, and so so that's kind of a cool little thing to kind of go at. But but if Jesus is not from the Father, then he's from a demon. It's one way or the other. This is what you see in John. Either he's the real deal or he's not. And that reminds me of what C.S. Lewis said, um, is that the Christian faith cannot be of mediocre importance. Either the Christian faith is the, of absolute importance or it's of no importance because Jesus was delusioned or he was a liar or it was a joke or it was all made up. So it, it's, it can't be of... Uh, mediocre importance, <laughs> um, which is really interesting because either he's from the father or he's not, um, you know, and then I think see, it might have been C.S. Lewis that also went on to say that, you know, you've got three options when it comes to Jesus. He is either who he said he is and thus case. Listen to him. <laughs> he's the son of God. He's God in the flesh. He's, you know, the second person of the Trinity. Either he's that, or he's he's crazy, you know, because he thinks he's that, because he says he's that on lots of places, and he does things, and people kneel down in the synoptic gospels and worship him, and he doesn't say, "Oh, get up, get up, stop it," you know, you know, <laughs> he's, he 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 receives their praise and their worship, their their honoring, so. Either, either he's who he said he was, or he's kind of crazy, or he's evil, and he's a, you know, a masquerade. So, so it's really one of those three things. <laughs> um, you know, I suppose there's some that don't think he existed, but almost no, nobody be really legitimately believes that um, in this day. Whether non, I mean, non-Christians that argue, everybody, you know, it's like, yeah, this, there was a guy named Jesus. You know, I mean, pretty much everybody agrees with that. So anyway, so that that's a little bit of a tangent. Yeah. Yeah. But thanks for drawing me back to that, June. I wanted to talk about the seal thing. It's kind of cool. It's, yeah. it's important to have documents. And God gave Jesus the document. Yeah. He is the document, right? Right. Yeah. So he gave us that promise. He is the pr promise incarnate. So... Um, yeah, I was, I'm excited to share that Kim is going to be preaching at Spirit of Life the next two weeks. Oh. She, was asked, she was asked by uh, the assistant to the bishop to fill in um, and our, is it, it's, can I say what's happening for Mary? I think is so, that, yeah. Yeah, um, well, anyway. Uh, I'm not we, sure. We know, we, we, Spirit of Life is in Belfair, I want to say, uh -huh. right? And Port no. Orchard. Or Orchard, okay. Yeah, so um, anyway, but I won't say what's happening for Marietta, but anyway, okay. you'll just, so, we'll wait for that. But anyway, so Kim's doing a little pulpit supply. Um, she's just about uh, certified and graduated from the Synod's Palm, uh, Psalm program, um, uh, which stands for what, Kim? Um, it's like preparing lay ministry preparing strengthening lay ministry or something like that yeah 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 preparing um, and strengthening lay ministry yeah yeah so yeah so that's cool so she's not you know she's no problem you know <laughs> so. yeah i'm glad they picked an easy an easy chapter you know yeah exactly you know mm -hmm. real piece of cake for you to piece of cake to, yeah to it's work a piece on. of bread yeah you're going to give them some bread, Kim. You just give them something to eat. Yeah. And and maybe what they get to feast on is that Jesus is, the seal has been set upon Jesus, and we've got that guarantee. You know, so what he says about us is true. We can trust it. Yeah, yeah, excellent. Um, you know, I do have another little tangent thought. Can we do that? 
I have a um, thought. Can I give please. can I give you mine? While we're talking about all this bread in business, I've written myself a note. And I'm going to research food in the first century Middle East. Cool. Yeah. I think it would be interesting to find out what they were eating back then. Yeah. (laughs) And it would probably be a little bit different from, uh, you know, different parts of the, even the Holy Land, you know. So up in Galilee, as you do your research, I'm I'm excited to see what you'll find out. But up in Galilee, uh, as they continue to do archaeology and Nazareth and Capernaum, et cetera, and they do find, you know, evidence of viticulture that definitely vineyards, grapes, growing wheat. And to this day, Israel, um, because they don't have much support in that area of the world, they grow all of their own food. Yeah. They have to do it all. How much the climate has changed between the first century and now. And and the big just like everywhere, the big issue is water, you know. Right. They they, you know, and so they've got their they've led the world in desalinization plants and and there's still a lot of questions about, you know, that. But nonetheless, anyway, so yeah, please research that and let us know um okay uh, what, what was their bread was it barley what what was was it wheat what was what kind of what kind of what kind of yeah. bread were they having yeah and june just make sure you find recipes too <laughs> french bread yeah french bread yeah that's the kind i like Ro- roman bread yeah yeah oh yeah there you go um a uh, lot of olives, though, of course, you know, so there's olive oil, you know, that was big, you know, that, you know, right outside Jerusalem, you know, they, although the olive trees don't go back to Jesus, they go back hundreds, like 800, 900 years, but they're on the rootstocks of the original trees from back in, you know, Jesus's day. So a lot of olive trees, interesting. So here's, here's my, okay, thank you for that tangent. Sure. Um, Here's my little um, uh, here's my little uh, tangent here when it comes to bread. Um, you know, seek first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added to you. You know, so Jonathan drew my attention to that yesterday, but I want to go down here to. Uh, the Lord's Prayer, concerning prayer. And so we've got the Lord's Prayer here in chapter 6 of Matthew, verse 9. It's also in Luke 11, uh, 2 through 4. Uh, um, what do we pray? Give us this day our daily bread. It's a good, it's a good translation. But look what we got here. We've got bread for tomorrow is another way it could be translated. Bread for tomorrow. So what? So we go, oh, so there's two ways to translate this. So we need to dig down here on this. All right, so we're going to do that. Um, so uh, artan is the word for bread, for food. So no problem there, straightforward. But this word, which I'll click on and we'll do a little, uh, let's see, we'll do a little Bible word study on this. Let me get that my word study over here. Now, when you see a circle like this in my Logos program, you go, why? There's only one way that that's translated into our New Testament, and it's translated as daily in this uh, revised, I think I'm working in the Revised Standard Version, a new Revised Standard Version. But look what we find here. So when I click on that, that gives you all the occurrences of this word. How many times does it occur in the New Testament? Right? We're studying Matthew here, 6.11, and the parallel, Luke 11.3. What, what I need to tell you about epiousios, 
is the word in Greek, epiousios, is that it's the only place in the New Testament it shows up. Huh. It is a, what are they, they have a fancy word for the ag, agrifon, is it an agri, uh, I can't, I can't remember, but anyway, I'm not a scholar. So, but oh, anyway, right. so it, it's, a, it's, it's the only place that this word occurs in the New Testament. So when we break it down, um, you know, when we break it down, we go, wow, how do we translate a word that we've never seen before? Yeah. So when you do that, um, you in Greek, you you go to the root and the endings and this type of thing. So epi is a preposition. Um, and uh, usias is is the actual word. So um, if we were to dig down and we're kind of running out of time, uh, we would see that that they get the word daily from like ongoing. Uh, uh, epi, like, uh, it's like, well, let's just see what, let's just see what a, um, let's just see what uh, a uh, Bible dictionary does with it. Like, let's do Lunida here. Uh, um, oh, what happened to it? It left me. I lost it. So pertaining to reoccurring on a daily basis, daily on each day, um, uh, 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 you know, um, so even though there's other forms, usius is like, uh, is that word for substance, <laughs> like ongoing substance uh, uh, is, is really almost the best way to break it down. Um, Homo usius is what they said about Jesus being fully divine and fully human, of one substance with the Father. So homo usius. So so one substance. Well, this is epi usius. So like ongoing usius, <laughs> ongoing substance bread is, but we wouldn't translate it that way. So they say daily. So, um, so, or, or bread for the morrow, so ongoing. So the bread that, so tomorrow, what we need tomorrow too, you know, that type of thing. Some people say that this is a reference to the day of the Lord, um, what we need at that final day or whatever. But the cool thing when it comes to manna, and I might even sound a little Roman Catholic here now, uh, some of the church fathers tran translated this daily bread as super substantial bread. Mm -hmm. This is this is the this is not ordinary bread. This is could it be that Jesus is talking about the same bread he's talking about in John six? Now now it's interesting. Luther's take on this is he he jumps full into daily bread as in the ordinary stuff that we need in life. Daily bread, you know, food, water, friends, family, you know, a shelter, you know, that God is that provider. And I love that. It's beautiful. And I, I think there's good reason for that. But some of the church fathers say, is he talking about the Eucharist? Is he talking about Jesus as the bread? of life and then him coming to us in this supper, in this meal? I don't know, <laughs> but he could be. Um, and of course, Catholics, how often do they take the Lord's Supper? As often as they can. They, a lot of devout Catholics are in mass three times a week or every day. Yeah. The priest is doing this daily. So give us this they are daily, give us this day. So we've got the word for day, um, aerma. Um, so, so give us today our daily ongoing bread. Yes, that's fine. Or it could be give us today this special bread and do it daily. So the Catholic Church has mass every day. Interesting. There you go. There you go. I think that's partly why. Um, 
And then there's other theological reasons that they do it. But um, I I don't know. I just think there's some mystery. I wanted you to know there's some mystery around this little yeah. daily bread here that's really beautiful and wonderful. Um, it's it's a word that only shows up here that we have to kind of go to the the little parts of the word to see what it means because it doesn't show up in other places either. Yeah. Also, our daily bread contains this. Bingo! There you, you go. Know, do you read your Bible every day? Yes. Yeah. My daily bread. <laughs> yeah, you could say, "Lord, give us this day our daily bread," and He says, "I did. It's sitting right in front of you." Yeah. <laughs> Open it up. It's my word. It's yeah. My word. Yeah. Open it up. Yeah. That's beautiful. That's fabulous. Yeah. Really cool stuff there. All right. Eternal life now and eternal life to come. There you go. There you go. All right. Well, there you, we've gotten some good food. I'm hungry. <laughs> I wonder what hearty meals are serving today. I hope there's some bread. <laughs> I'll go in and get some of the Hawaiian bread. <laughs> Do you deliver? <laughs> Do I deliver? Do I deliver? Well, you know, we need to start. There's some health department issues with doing that, uh, but uh, uh, at least in the past. But you know, um, but we need that. That's a ministry that we could start up. Is that maybe hearty meal? I know you were kind of maybe half joking, Ace, but um, but you know with the COVID thing and, you know, and people having trouble getting up to church for various reasons, we might want to start doing a, a, a delivery service on the, on the hearty meal. It's part of, people are talking about it. People are talking about it. So, all right. Yeah. Only if some of us can't get there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Only if there's some men that will. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I say that because it's like a like again they think they can see this and then yeah okay and then I'm um, yeah making um, you know for the uh, Sunday yeah. brunch it's like oh we got to get some other people to step up on the yeah. delivery part yeah there there's enough of us around here we could spread out many yeah. hands make light work that's true yeah and when and now that we got our brunches going and you're involved in lots of different groups <laughs> you're in big trouble so yeah, yeah. I know I've got my list. Yeah, there you go. Okay, um, prayer uh, requests, um, any names that we want to put out before we finish up here today? How's, how's, how's our little Emmy doing? Uh, well, it's so complicated, but they got genetics back and she has a gene mutation that she is the only one in the whole world that has. Oh, so God. there's no data, there's no known trajectory, there's, it's so uh, disheartening for her mother. She was really hoping that genetics would show something and it did, but they don't know what it means. So it's just- Strange. Very we difficult. Keep praying for them. I for their whole them. family i mean it's yeah, uh, marcus yeah. is probably going to be deployed to south korea and oh, it, it's just a mess bless them yeah uh, wow thank you any others we want to hold that dave keller starting chemo a new different kind of chemo this week um brain cancer so we're praying for him um george George, yeah, George Roberts says he's learned about two two different kinds of leukemia, so he's going to be looking at what they what next steps are with that. So, so lots of prayers for him. So, yep. For a All right. Thing that we're almost coming out of the pandemic that God has spared us and maybe taught us a lesson. Yeah. I think about what a gift it is to have had a vaccine yes. and just think about how many people in the world don't have that luxury <laughs> and and I, I my prayer now is that it can get out to more and more places 
even while we have to start talking about a booster shot, you know, and there's, okay. there's a, there's a lot of ethics involved in the World Health Organization. They're like, uh, Pfizer, let's get everybody a vaccine before you start working on a booster. <laughs> uh, now, I'm not saying they can't do both at the same time, but, but it's really interesting uh, about in that regard, because I think getting everybody vaccinated, not just in our country, but but in the world is the way we'll kind of stop this thing from mutating. But then you're dealing with free will and there are people that will not. Yeah, and and some people have good reasons and some people I struggle with their reasons, but I know a lot of people I know and love and respect to the utmost that have reasons. And like I said, I'd, I'd try not to judge on that. And, All right, you know, but, that's free uh, will. So, so yeah, that's freedom. Uh, so yeah. Um, all right. And our VBS coming up. Yeah. All right. And it is it is Emmy, right, Kim? Yeah, that's Emerson Emmy. Emmy. Yep. Emmy, that's what they call her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Yeah. I'll tell her mother that you asked about her. Yeah. All right. Let Let's close in prayer. Gracious God, thank you for the food today. Thank you for your word, for this bread that endures and keeps us going into eternal life. Um, thank you that you've chosen us. Thank you that you have worked in us faith and um, just continue to feed us in your word. The Lord, um, we pray for your church as it emerges from the pandemic in our world and we pray for that ongoing process as we're not out of the woods in any respect yet and it's still dramatically affecting everything so we pray for your guidance and your wisdom and your endurance and fortitude and strength and patience lord we pray for little emmy and her medical issues and Pray for her healing and for mom and dad and the whole family. Uh, hold them in your care. We pray for Dave as he's battling cancer and for George as well. Um, and all those folks that on our community that are dealing with cancer and, and need your healing. They're, you know our hearts, Lord, and we need your healing and we need to be fed. And so thank you that you've given us your bread um, and, and, and give us this bread always. So be with us until we meet again in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, Thank you very much. You are you are Thank very you, welcome. You're welcome, Ace. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Thank this you. Bye-bye. We'll see Bye -bye. you soon.